Hi everyone, this is Dr. Hess. I'm going to model some three column notes and today we're going to talk about De Morgan's Law and sets. So the question that we're going to be using is this word problem. We're given a set U, a set A, and a set B and we want to use De Morgan's Law to find the indicated set. So I'm going to explain what the set U is and some of these other terms so you can do this problem. First we need to know what a set is. Set is a group of things that we list. We're going to use the curly brackets to show that it's a set and put commas between each. We only list one thing twice. So for example, we might have the set A of the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, or this, the set B with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. You could have the set of the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You could have the set of the months of the year. Once you have something in the set, you only need to list it once, so you wouldn't put it twice. You wouldn't put Monday in the set twice. You wouldn't put the number one in the set twice. A subset is a portion from the larger set. So for example, if you have set A with the numbers two, four, six, eight, a subset could be the number two and eight, or it could be just two, it could be six. I've got another example with subset B. You could have, if your subset B, if your set B is the numbers one, two, three, four, your subset could be one and two or three and four. It could be all of them. It could be none of them. It's just any combination of the ones from the original set. So when we say all possible subsets, we're looking for all combinations of, from the set. So in this example, I have set C with the numbers three, seven, and nine. So we're always going to have the empty set and the entire set. We'll have a set with each number individually, and then we'll have a set with the combinations of all two. So three and seven, three and nine, and seven and nine. Traditionally with numbers, you put the smaller number first just to stay organized. And the order does not matter. Um, think of it kind of like a bag of marbles. As long as each set is different, all, that's all that matters. All right, so now let's talk about improper subsets. So an improper subset is when your subset is the set. So that when here's our set three, seven, and nine, the improper subset is when you have everything. We've got some operations that we use with sets. There's union, so it's a U shape. That means you combine everything. Intersection means it's kind of like tweezers. You only pick up the things that they, the two sets and share. And then you have this little hash mark, like if I were to write C prime, that'd be the negation. That means anything not in C. So if I, so I'm going to give you some examples. And we're going to use set A and set B as I have written out here. And I'm going to walk you through how to do some set operations here. So let's say we want to do A union B. So that means we're looking for the set of everything that they have in common. So I'm going to say, well, here's a one. So we're going to put the one down with the comma. They both have a two. So the two stays in there. There's a three. There's a four in both. We only write it once. There's a six and there's an eight. And so that is our set. That's the union of all those elements. Now it, a different set operation would be intersection. A intersect B. So that means we're looking for what these two sets have in common. So they both have a two and they both have a four, and that's the only thing that they share. So think about the word share or overlap when you look at intersection. So A intersect B is just two and four. We always use the curly brackets, and we always put a comma between each element. Now let's talk about negation. So if we have the set A2468, to find the negation, first we need to know what 
our possible elements are. And so that's where this set U comes into play. It tells us what are the possible elements. And so I'm going to tell you that our set U is the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So everything in A has to have come from U. It doesn't have to include everything in U. So when we do, do the negation, we compare A to the uh, universal set. And we're going to flip it. So if there's a 2 in A, we don't want 2 in A anymore. We don't want the 4. We don't want the 6. We don't want the 8. We want everything that's not in A, but that is in our universe. So that leaves a 1, 3, 5, and 7. So we're going to compare A to the universe or the set of all possible elements and then take everything that's not in A and that's our A prime. So that's our universal set. So it's always written with the letter U and here's some more examples. So the universal set could be all the letters of the alphabet. It could be the numbers 1 through 10. That It could be the days of the week or the months of the year. So now let's talk about De Morgan's Law. So it's a rule that's used with set operations to show different ways to write sets when negation is used. So specifically, if you have the set where we're going to have A union B and then you negate it, De Morgan's Law says you can kind of distribute the negation. So A and B become negated and then we flip our operation. So instead of having a union here, we flip it. And notice in this case, so we kind of distribute our negation sign. So that's how we got those negation signs here. And then we take our operation, instead of being intersection, we flip it to union. And so this is helpful because when we have more complicated problems, it reduces the number of steps that we're going to need to do. So here's another example I wanted to show you. So here we have a a intersect B prime. So we're going to distribute this negation. So the A goes from just regular A to not A. The B, because it was negated, it just becomes a regular B. And the intersection changes to union. So, and here, here's our problem from the beginning. So we are given our universal set, we have set A and set B, and we need to use De Morgan's Law. So here's the key information. Here's our universal set, here's A, and here's B. And this is what we're solving for. So to do De Morgan's Law, we're going to take this negation and apply it to A and B. So A becomes negated, B was negated, so we're going to have a regular B. And the union flips and becomes an intersection. So now to solve this, we first need to find A prime. So after we've applied to Morgan's Law, find A prime. So that means we're going to compare A to the universal set. So I'm going to cross out anything that A and the universal set share. So we've got a 9 and a 9, 11s, 15s. So that tells us that A prime is going to be everything that's left. So 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 10, 12, 13, and 14. So now that we have A prime and we have B, now we're going to find the intersection. And so we're going to compare A and B. And intersection means we're going to look at what they share, A prime and B share. So there's a 1 in both of them. B is the only one that has 2. A is the only one that has 3. They both have a 4. There's no 5 
They both have a seven. Only one has the nine. Only one has a 10. They both share the 12. That one only has the 13. They both share the 14. And the 15 is only in one. So that means the elements that A prime and B share are 1, 4, 7, 12, and 14. And I'm going to clarify that I'm solving for A prime intersect B, which by De Morgan's law is the same as A union B prime and that whole quantity prime. So in this video, we talked about sets. We talked about subsets, set operations, universal set, union, intersection, and negation. We showed how to apply De Morgan's law to find what is it, what are the elements in specific sets. So here's a problem I'd like you to try. This is, we're given this union and the same A set and the same B set, but we're going to solve a slightly different problem. So pause your recording, take a few minutes, use De Morgan's Law. So here's our problem, here's our sets, and note that we are looking for the intersection of A prime intersect B, the whole quantity negated. So pause and come back. All right, and so here, our answers. And I've got the steps written out a little bit on what I did. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.